joining us live to talk about this. We are sounding very much like a broken record, former Labor Senator Stephen Conroy, aren't we? But here we go again. I mean, look, economists are split today and whether they go up or whether they uh, pause, but it seems likely at some stage they're going to keep on going up throughout the course of, of this year. What's, what's your read on things? Well, look, all of the economic data this year, and we're coming into, you know, six months, has all showed a significant collapse. When, you, when Angus Taylor talks about, oh, the numbers drop from 6.4 to 6.3, what that does is uses all of the data from the six months last year. If you actually go, what's happening for the last six months in this calendar year, you can see that inflation is already tanking. Uh, and so this idea that there is a need to, you know, push interest rates up higher will simply bring on a recession. And, you know, you've heard me say that Bill Lowe is just deliberately, you know, wanting to give the middle finger to Australians at the moment. He's stuffed this up for the last two or three years. And now he's just looking to, mm. you know, put the nail in the coffin of the Australian economy. A couple of points that Warren Hogan made on the program uh, a little earlier this hour, Stephen, I'd like to get your thoughts on. First of all, he believes that once those, all the wage rises, which have recently just come into effect, once all of those wage rises start filtering into the economy, there's going to be a job for the RBA to do there because that may well require lifting the rates to above 5%. I mean, is Look, that, that, is that, I, is that saw, heading into recession territory? No, I saw the figures. So let's just, let's, let's just call BS. Wage rises jump. You know, I think even you said it's been flatlining uh, at about 2.5%. It's now at about 3.5%. Is, 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 is any economist trying to suggest that a 1% increase in wages higher than it was previously, when inflation is hit 7 and 8%, is somehow going to cripple the economy. This is absolute BS. This is where market economists just don't live in the real world. Australians have taken a huge pay cut. A huge pay cut. That's what, that's what when wages go to here and inflation goes to here mean. Australians have taken a wage cut. And Phil Lowe wants to give them a bigger wage cut. This will drive the economy into recession. But this continued talk that there's some massive wages explosion that's based on a 1% higher than last year is just BS. What about the other point about immigration, uh, that turbocharging immigration <coughs> was done at precisely the wrong time and is a factor here in, in, in the RBA having to, having to tame things now and control things because there's too many people here finding work, there's too many people here finding homes, pushing up rents, etc. Well, that was a figure that was going forward for a number of years. That wasn't a figure that was all suddenly happening today. I mean, what we've had is essentially a return of international students. And they are necessary for Is it too high, all though? Is the number too high? I agree. We all no, need workers, all. but was the number too high? We need, no, absolutely. In 2030, this was a number that said we'll have a new Adelaide by 2030. The exact same number that the Liberal Party forecast when Peter Dutton was the immigration minister. The exact same number. All that's happened is COVID stopped those people coming to Australia before and they're coming in in a bigger clump because the second year students do need to come. So you get your first year students. You get the second year students that couldn't come because of COVID. You get the third year students that couldn't come because of COVID. Trying to create this into a crisis is nothing more than Angus Taylor and the Liberal Party dog whistling and trying to pretend that it would have been any different under them. OK, just finally, uh, we've got a diplomatic incident on our hands, uh, Stephen Conroy. Rishi Sunak uh, leaping to the defence of uh, the British cricketers. I don't think that's much of a surprise, but um, accusing us of, uh, of not upholding the, the standards of sportsmanship. I mean, that's a shot across the bow, isn't it? Were, were, were you going to have a whinge too if you were born in England? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born in England, and as uh, all of my uh, dear friends know, uh, when it comes to cricket in particular, I still barrack for the Poms. Uh, I did think it was a poor decision to ultimately not think about it over the lunch break and call Bearstow back. I'm with, I'm with Brad Hogg, uh, Australian This spinner, isn't some, but who... this isn't some, you know, friendly match on a Sunday afternoon. This is the Ashes. This is, no, look, if, if the this is blood is you can and be thunder and, and, and win. And, and all that comes with victory within within the confines of the rule book, Stephen Conroy. 
No, but uh, look, the, the, the difficulty I have with this is, is if it had happened in the first five balls, fair, fair call, out stupidity. Was it still stupid of him to wander up? Yes, but the truth is he believed the ball was dead. And even though the Australians had pre-planned this, they pre should have not applied it to yeah. the last ball of an over. I don't know. He clearly, this. as Brad Hogg says... Well, what he, about Bairstow doing? It. The... No, but that wasn't in the first... At the end of an over. I mean, the identical situation happened in 2011 at Trent Bridge. The yeah. Indians ran uh, Ian Bell out because he thought the over was finished and it was actually the end of the session and started wandering off. They ran him out. Huge controversy. And to the credit of Dhoni, the captain... He reflected on it over the tea break and he withdrew the appeal. And ultimately, first five balls, I have no difficulty whatsoever. Oh, so you think, was an idiot. you think we should we, we, we should have we should have uh, we should apologize? Someone said that no, over. I, I can't think, remember who. I I, I, can, I I should I think people should stop pretending that this is some huge diplomatic incident. I mean, you, you've seen shocking behaviour, and I'm very pleased to hear that the MCC suspended three of its members. I think the crowds will react. A diplomatic incident, let's not get too carried away. This is still a game of cricket, a fabulous game of cricket. What a great know. series we're having. You but, never know. Uh, I just think, I I just think that I, just, I genuinely think that he should have withdrawn it after reflecting over tea. I think he was still burnt from the day before when a catch was ruled out, not by an English, not by an Englishman, by an independent I umpire. Know. I have to... And uh, I think he was still, he was still sore you. from the day before. I grew up playing cricket uh, and I was told in... I think it was my under nines team in far north Queensland. Don't ever leave your crease. You're vulnerable. Don't ever leave your crease. Simple. Mate, Don't Mancad, leave your crease. Mancad, Mancad uh, has become infamous, and unfortunately, this is going to be a Trevor Chapel style infamous incident oh, that shouldn't be talked about. That's just silly shouldn't talk. Shouldn't be talked about because this has been a great series in Australia. Absolutely. Deservedly leading the series. Absolutely nonsense, Stephen Conroy. It's good to see you. It's good to see you back, though. Good to see you back. We'll chat to you later.